Good morning. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a very intricate beaded ring using a really unique bead called a cloisonne bead. And this is what it looks like. It reminds me of a little Christmas ornament. It's just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And I will put all of the information as to where I got this beauty. The whole inspiration came from a ring I accidentally wore on video and never made a video of because I didn't think I would ever do this ring. Very detailed, very time consuming. So I'm not going to talk very much. I have to concentrate. But this is the project. This was what I was having a very hard time with figuring out how to get that lift off that I had. And once I did, that's how it came together. And I absolutely love it. Love, love, love this ring. It is one of my favorites. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to dive right in. So you're going to need a nine and a half millimeter cloisonne bead, some size 15s, 11s, and 8s. They're all Toho, some three millimeter round Druck beads, and also a size 11 beading needle, which I'm using a tulip, and I have eight pound fire line, two and a half yards. And we're gonna go ahead and begin, since we're down on Zoom, by picking up this beautiful bead, and I want it to behave today, <laughs> no struggles, and 10 size 11s. You want to make sure the count is exactly 10. And now we're going to slide it down. We're going to leave about a four to six inch little piece at the bottom. Just a little piece for us to hold on to. Pick up the whole work and tie it into a square knot. And let it grab and pull down just like this. So you have 10 beads hugging one side and you have something to hold on to. Now we're just gonna go right back up this bead, just like this, if my fingers would cooperate this morning. And we're gonna pick up 10 more size 11s. Okay, so we have coming out in this direction. We're gonna go back around and go right back through that bead. Just like this. And my goodness, I went ahead and I think I pulled three yards. That is gonna get me into a lot of trouble later on. Trim that down really quick. Okay, so if you'll notice now, when you pull on both ends of the thread, there's gonna be a gap at the top and the bottom. We're gonna take care of that right now. So I'm holding that little tail, and here's our working thread right here. I'm just gonna weave up. Everything's gonna get loose and <laughs> just like that. Don't worry, we're, we're gonna fix it. Don't stress. So just run up those 10 beads Hope I said the right amount of number. And we're gonna fill in that space right now. So we're coming up on it. We're gonna add one size 11 into that space and go down the next 10. And see how it fills it in beautifully. I'm sorry I can't let go yet because everything will just fall apart on me. And I will lose my spot. So here's that last little gap we have to fill in. So we'll pick up 111. And then I'm just going to run through a few more, just four. Step out and put my needle down and make sure everything looks good. And pull on both threads. Everything's going to be a little messy at the moment. Don't let that stress you out. And also keep that other thread just to the side. It'll only be for a little while and then we'll get rid of it. So don't, don't worry about that. Now we're gonna do one round of peyote using our size 11s. So we'll pick up one 11, skip one, and go right into the next. Again, this will be loose. 
temporarily. Just go ahead and pop your 111, skip, go into the next, all the way around. And yes, I'm going slow this morning, taking my time, because this part is so important. If you miss or skip one, the entire piece needs to be cut. There is no going back. Yes, I have learned that several times already. <laughs> so, um, that's why I'm going to be quieter today than normal. Concentrating because not only am I counting in my head, I'm also making sure I don't forget anything. It's really hard when you disassemble. I took that ring apart piece by piece, row by row, and couldn't figure it out for the life of me until I said, oh my goodness, that was the one step I kept forgetting. And once I figured it out, I said I have to do the video now because I will forget. All right, we're almost there. So you can tell it's messy. It's looking a little rough, but you can tell we're coming to a step up because of that one bead there that's sticking out. That's my like indicator. So here we go. I'm gonna pull down so you can see we have two here and then that one sticking out waiting for us. So we're gonna finish the last round by skipping this one, going into this one and I'm gonna try and jump up into the one that is sticking out just like that. Perfect. Pull down. Now, if you start to lose your way, you can go ahead and start pressing these down so you'll be able to see the next row real easily. See how I'm pressing it down? So I know now each place to put my next bead, which will be our beautiful 15s. So we're gonna go ahead now, pick up a 15 and go right into that space right there so from this 11 right into this one and we'll do that all the way around this is the easy part and you do not have to pull tight you'll see it'll start to see how it's just already starting to pull down on its own just keep a nice even Um, tension, sorry, focused. I have many, many, many orders for a bunch of those gorgeous marbles that we just did. So that's what I'll be doing later today, working on a bunch of things that I've had on hold for a while. And I really enjoyed your photos. Oh my goodness, the work that you put into them. Absolutely just breathtaking. All right, we're already at the last stitch. So it should look just like this. And I haven't cranked down. It doesn't need it. Yes, that's me talking. You do not need to heavily reinforce this. So here's our last stitch coming from this 11 into this one. And I'm going to run through just a couple. So I'll go through the next 15, 11, 15, and 11. And that's it. We're done on this side. We're going to weave over to this area that has that piece of thread sticking out. Do not let that get in your way. Don't let it bother you. We'll be done with it in a few minutes. Okay, so see how I'm coming out now in this direction from this 11? We're just going to weave over. I'm going to pick up those two 11s. So I'm popping out of an 11 that is sticking up on the other side of the bead. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing that we just did. And I'm going to tuck this little piece of thread over. There we go. And we're going to pick up a 15 and 
each space now or gap, whatever you want to call it, we'll get a size 15. And we'll do this all the way around. And then we'll be ready to start decorating. Once we start decorating, things pick up. Things start to take shape and it goes nice and easy. This is just, you know, about getting it in there, making sure everything looks good and even, and you can feel it start to move a little. So I am actually using a little bit more tension, not too much. And I'll explain why in a second. Let's just get these little guys in there, round and round. That's really pretty. My first color was an ivory, the same color of the mat. And I said, this isn't gonna work. I did a test shot, it did not work. So I had to use these beautiful uh, beads here. And I think it's just gonna all come together beautifully. And then I'll have two very cool rings. <laughs> Because no, I'm not going to give these away or sell them. All right, so we are coming up on a step up. So just take your time in here. Here's my last stitch right now. So we're going to go through that 11, bypass that little area with the thread sticking out. And we're done. Okay, so I said the tension had to be good for a reason. You want it to look like a ring, nice and even around this whole bead. You don't want it, I don't really want to push and mess with it, but one side bulky and one side, you want it nice and even just like this. So back to the working thread, figure out where I left off here and we'll continue through. I'm just gonna weave away from that little piece of string so I'm just going through the next couple of beads. All right, and I'm gonna turn the work so it'll be easier for you to see where I'm going. Because now I'm gonna refer to this as working on top of the bead, but we're really, if you put it on the side, it's going to be the side, but this is the easiest way to show you. So right now I'm coming out of this little 15. I want to be coming out we're going to go like this on the diagonal through those two 11s. Okay. So I went from this 15 right here through these two 11s, just like this. Now we're in position. We're going to do a round of peyote on top. So we'll pick up one. 11 and see how there's two side by side right here two 11s we're just going to skip that group of two and go into the one right after that and you'll see when we turn it on the side see how it sticks out that's whoa that's what we want a bug just came out of nowhere <laughs> took me by surprise Okay, so we'll do that all the way around the top. 111, skip those two, and then right through there. And we'll do this all the way around. So I'm going to apologize in advance in case it gets a little bit noisy. I'll raise my voice a little bit. I try to get on camera as early as possible today. I'm running a little bit late. Um, as soon as Dunkin' Donuts opens, which is like four minutes down the road, people, um, go crazy. It's loud. It gets congested. I'm not even lying. When I go there, the line is, you can't even get in the driveway, which is where I'm going to head afterwards. And hopefully the line is calmer, but especially on a Sunday, phew, I love 
of some Dunkin' Donuts, so oh my goodness. Okay. Pick up our last 11. So we know we're at our step up now. We have this group that's together, the two, but we have to finish the round by going through the one and then we'll step out that one that is sticking out. Right here. And now we're ready to go ahead and pop in a size eight into each space. So each space is going to get, and I'm gonna turn it like this so you'll be able to see a size eight. So one, two, we'll do this all the way around. Yep, that's gonna get, we're removing that next. Don't worry, because it's going to start to frustrate me. That little piece of string there will get in my way, but I had nowhere else to weave it into before. Now we have a place which we'll take care of right after we do this. And this is just going to start securing and making everything so pretty. All right, I'm just going to move a couple things around only because many, many details, lots and lots of steps, and I don't want to miss any. I can't. I cannot miss any steps today. Yesterday, I tried four or five different times and I missed one step or it was just a hot mess. Okay, so here we are. Last one, we're gonna go through the 11, step up through that eight, but everything's very loose. You can see a lot of threads. So now we're gonna just take the time and run around this whole piece and start just pulling down using Firm tension. You don't have to go cranking down, but you want to make sure. Oh, it's a lucky little ladybug. Oh, you want to make sure that you don't see the thread. I'm sorry, I get so sidetracked. Um, all the way around. And yes, I can still feel a lot of movement in here, which I'm not a fan of. Let's see, not on that end, it's definitely here. So I'm gonna go through a few more. Shoot. Okay, step out of an eight and just set this thread aside. Oh my goodness, my, um... all right, well, let's attach a needle to the other thread. I know I said this before, I have a vintage table that I'm beating on and it keeps getting snagged on that corner. I'm gonna have that taken care of today. <laughs> I'm tired of it, ripping the work out of my hands. Okay, so we went and attached a needle to this little piece. All we have to do is weave it into the work. We have a knot that we made in the beginning so I'm just going to run through the next 11. However, you need to get up to a size eight just without showing thread. That's all. And I'm working in the most strangest angle here. I know I'm going to slip right through this piece. I just can tell. see oh okay so here we go I got a nice shot right through all three right up through this eight right after that eight I'm gonna pick up that thread space and just put in two more knots this is not necessary um, this is just something I do and now I made a mess gosh yes I did no nope, I caught it okay let's try that again there beautiful and now I'm gonna go through a couple more beads pull that knot right through and burn I like to burn next to a size 8 or cut 
that way I don't cut through the work. Okay, so now back to the project. We don't have to worry about that little piece of thread getting in our way. We're gonna go ahead and use our 15s now. We're gonna pick up three and just go right into that next size eight. Three 15s into the next eight all the way around. Oh, I do love those colors together. At first I said, I'm not too sure because I loved the ivory with it. But I said, why not? It's fun, it's bright, it's pretty. It doesn't take away from that center bead. Okay, we're getting there. The tedious part is coming up next which yeah, I'm nervous about. It's those little tiny details and I'm like, why do you pick these projects with the littlest beads possible? It's not that I'm nervous. I mean, I've done the ring many, many times. It's just, I wanna make sure you guys can see. We're already at the last stitch. Last three, go through the eight. Step right up out of that second bead from that three bead group right there. Now we're going to pick up three 15s. And this is where it gets tough and hard to see. So I kind of will use my thread as a guide. And I know I want to go up into that 15 right there with three 15s on go right into this 15 so we're kind of on the diagonal like this see how it pulls the work up so we're coming out of the middle one we're going to go right into the one that's next to that beautiful bead pick up three more i'm not going to move so you can see and we'll go right down into the second or middle bead from this group. I just want that middle bead. There we go. And there. Let's see how it looks. Kind of press it out. Push. Perfect. And that's what we're going for. And keep going. One, two, three. Now we know where we're going, right up into this little 15 right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull the work down however you need to get in there and just keep going. I'm gonna press it out, make sure everything looks good. Make sure I have the right number on. One, two, three, one, two, three, yes, pull. Everything's gonna straighten out when we do the underside, when we flip it over. So don't worry if it doesn't look nice and even to begin with. That's what kept tripping me up was it looked off. It. We will fix that, we will take care of that. Just keep going, adding your three into that middle group, three up into the top. right in between there and we'll do this all the way around just relaxed tension nothing major it's just hard for me personally to see so i'm gonna make sure i take my time and get in there so I don't miss a step. So it's funny when people ask, can you please make a video? I said, no, <laughs> no way. Uh, I don't have directions. I just kind of sat down one day, started playing with 
with this bead or that one excuse me and pulled it together and I had no clue that I completely forgot to take it off when I went on camera and I found it the other day when I was wearing it and I got so many compliments and I said you know what why not it's why not it's just beautiful and I hope you guys enjoy. This is the relaxing part for me. All this little tedious detail work somehow just relaxes me all the time. Um, not necessarily on camera. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't laugh because then I'll start shaking. Uh makes me a little nervous just because when I go back to edit I I'm very hard on myself such a perfectionist oh my gosh I can't even see in there <sighs> yeah so it's really 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 requires a lot of concentration when you're doing this very tiny detail work so Almost there. Oof, that one's a mess. It's just getting up and down, up and down. And there are no shortcuts. I tried to say, go ahead and finish this part, but no. All right, it's going to get tight in here. This is the part I had trouble with before. It gets very snug once we get towards the end, which is what we want. So take your time and just get them in there. When you see the end in sight, that's when you know, okay, good. Deep breath, relax. We're going to be on to an easier step next. This is mainly our, the top of the ring, what we want to shine and be beautiful and perfect. So there we go. One, two, three. In there. See where it gets kind of hard to see? This is our last stitch. So we just have three more. And then right down into that group right there. And this time we're gonna weave over through to exit a size eight. And we're done with the top. We decorated that whole beautiful piece let's just take a breath a minute make sure everything looks good and oh my gosh i was really concerned about the colors not anymore we're we're off now we're on to the nice easy part we're bigger beads so i'm gonna literally flip the piece over this is now our top of the ring just like here flip it over we're exiting a size 8 we're gonna pick up three elevens and jump into the next eight and I'm gonna pull because I kind of want that point so that'll be my indicator for our next round so three right into that next eight and pull and we'll do this all the way around you can definitely feel the top side starting to stretch and that's exactly what we want to pull it forward so you can see the, all the beautiful detail oops going through 15 there okay so believe me the hardest part is over tedious detail work now we're just going to go ahead and um, 
I almost said something else. We're going to lift it up, make it do what I wanted it to do. Because whenever I kept rebuilding it, that bead kept irritating my finger. And I was like, that doesn't feel right. That's not how I built the original ring. Couldn't figure it out. This was the step I kept forgetting. Just these three 11s into an eight. All the way around. All right, last stitch. We'll go through the eight. Then step right out of my favorite bead. I'm always saying that. Just the size eight in the leash. Okay. And then through one, two 11s. Perfect. Grab your little three millimeter rounds now. And we're gonna pick up one round and go right into the middle. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm coming this way. My thread's coming this way, so we'll go into the middle or second bead of the next group. And we'll do this all the way around. We're getting there, I promise. See? See how everything's starting to pull on top there? Beautiful, I can feel it. And my fingers, everything's tightening up beautifully. And we're almost to the point where we start the band so I can switch over and then we can do some quick tightening up because it is a little loose and we'll be good to go. I cannot wait to wear this again because it was one that I wore every single day. And even though I had dipped it, I still wore the finish off of the rounds I had on there. Um, last stitch, so through the 11, the round, step out of a round. All right. And now back to our eights. This is it. One eight into each three millimeter round. Now start using some high tension. Pull down. And then we'll begin the band. And then I'm going to swap out. So you don't have to watch me do that. Because <laughs> I know you're probably tired of seeing that. But I'm telling you, it is the most comfortable. I have never broke a ring with that band ever. And you know I'm not very gentle on my hands, on my fingers, on my jewelry. So... It is my favorite stitch, the herringbone band for my rings. It just truly is. It's a beautiful stitch to begin with. Wow, that is gorgeous when you look inside there. Okay, so through the round, up through the eight. Just move away from that area. So we're going to go a few beads away to step out of an eight. And it doesn't matter how many or if you want to go all the way around, go for it. We're just right here now, preparing to add the band. So we're stepping out of a size eight. We're gonna go ahead and pick up two. Coming out in this direction toward me, two eights, go back around and through that one. Pull down. So they lay like this, and then we'll go right up through one. Back down this one and then right back through the original one we came out of because it's very loose. And then right back up. Okay, pick up two eights, right down one. Kind of straighten them out. Up these two. Don't worry if it's a little loose and not straight. We need it like that. We're going to take care of that after. And here's where I'm going to move down to my 11s. So I picked up two 11s and I'm going down. I'm cracking up because the ladybug's crawling on me. Down one eight and then up an eight <laughs> and an 11. I'm going to bring them outside as soon as I finish. Set the little guy free. 
And you'll continue this um, for the length of the ring that you want. Uh, the, I'm going to actually wear it on this finger. Let me remove this so you can see. So keep in mind those two eights. Ooh, very close. So when you're testing it, wearing it, keep that in mind when you come around. So it looks like this. So you'll have plenty of room now for our rows of eights that we have to add in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and swap out. And that is stunning. I am in love with that colorway. You will see me wear that one quite a bit. All right, let me grab my other colors. I believe I just need a couple of eights and my 15s. And I'm going to move some things over because I'm pretty close. All right, great. So we're ready to attach the band and everything. See how it's not stabilized? We're going to take care of that now. So just find the other side, the other eight that is opposite, which will be right here, this one. And I'm going to go ahead before I attach it, sorry, I should have done one round of herringbone using my eights so it matches this side. Let me go down one and then back up those two. Now, fold it over. I want to find the one. I'll either use my thread or a beading wall. See how it's lining up right there to this one? Pick up one size eight and go right down through that one. One eight and into the work. And I'm going to go down just a couple. So the eight plus two more 11s. And then reinforce. So back up and around everything. Okay. Perfect. All right, so go back down these two. I want to make a little arch. Just go down those two eights. I apologize. I have to hold it up for a second because darker colors here. Okay, and then up these two eights. I want to stabilize this area and give it a little bit of a bridge. That's what I'm going to call it. So we'll pick up four. 15s and we're just gonna this is how I do it I'm coming out this side so I just kind of line it up and I know that is where I need to go right into there I'll try not to cover things up and you'll see it's gonna pull it give it grab from the top to the bottom so you'll have that color in there and give it a lot of stability and we're ready to go tighten this up so it'll just be three fifteens into the next eight. And I know we're working with darker colors, which is why my video was done using those bright colors. One, two, three, into the next eight. Here we are where we're going to add that little detail. So we'll pick up four here, two, three, four, and we're going to run down this stack. So these two eights, and it'll make that little, hugs that little round beautifully. I love it. Right back up these two and do the same thing. So it'll be four. And right through this eight. Okay, he's <laughs> crawling up my neck. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my goodness, that's funny. I've never had that happen before. I've had cats meowing in the background and all kinds of things, but not that. So three into the next eight. We're almost done. And I can't wait to pop it on. I'm not taking it off for the whole day either. <laughs> Truth. One, two, three into that eight. And here's our last little bridge. One, two, three three, four. 
and then right down this group. Continue down, because that band is not straight. Continue down, and this is what I do with all my herringbone bands, all the way down. Ooh, I got lucky. Up, I just can't see anything with these dark ones. Going from light to dark, it's really, really hard like that. Those bright, beautiful beads over there. Okay, all the way back down the other side. I'm just gonna take my time here so I don't throw, uh, show any thread. Excuse me. Okay. Almost there. And you know, you, this is again, not necessary, just me. Because if I'm going to build something that takes this amount of time, patience, I want to make sure it's not ever going to fall apart. So I'm going to tuck a couple knots in and I'll show you where. And I'm sorry, I'm holding it so, so close right now. It's just I can't see and it is snug. So I'm going to run right back through that eight. I can feel a lot of movement. I don't like that right there. So I'm going to pull down. I'm going to go through just one at a time. One eight. Pull. Up one eight. And pull. See, that's what I want right there. Then down two. And no, I'm not going to put a knot in there actually. It is not necessary. Wow, that tightened up perfectly. I'm just going to retrace that again. Beautiful. And I'll step out. Normally I don't step out of an 11, but I'm going to and hope I don't burn through the work. Pop your needle off. We're done. I'm going to see what it looks like. On. I always hold my breath there. Always. Oh, gorgeous. Let's go off Zoom. I'm going to try this on. And let's see, that's where I wanted it to go. Yes, it's tight at first, but you know, fire line stretches. But, oh, I love it. I wanted that burnt orange to pull from that burnt orange in there. And I know it's a hard color to see. But that's the project, and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I really hope you'll give these beautiful beads a try. And um, look at lucky little ladybug. He's so cute. I'm going to go release him. Anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday. And I will see you very soon. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.